Hey there, welcome back guys. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to replace the Y access limit switch on the Ender 3 S1 Pro. If you have the Ender 3 S1 Pro, or most likely any printer that's making this sound, have a look, have a peek. Then what I do, I press complete, and I'm seeing... Yeah, that happens every now and again. I'm not then you got to replace this. Thankfully, it's covered under warranty if, if it happens within the one year. If not, um, you know, I'm pretty sure it's like a seven or eight dollar part. Um, looks like this. Really easy to install uh, the limit switch. And um, without any further ado, come, let's get started so that we can get you up and running with your printer in no time. Okay, so this is the piece right here. We're going to replace it. I'm just going to open it up. See what's inside. Not bad. Looks brand new. No wear and tear either on this part there. I don't want to limit how much I touch. Oh wow. Original Creality parts if you look. See? Have some Creality stuff happening in there. Um, so what we're going to do is. It should be relatively easy. Hopefully we don't have to take it apart. to we'll leave it there. And so it's ready to go. Uh, most likely we're just going to move some stuff out of the way so check your plugs so when you do turn it out for me i'm just going to turn it out that way and then we have some oh wow interesting connectors in the back if you look really closely uh there i'll just shine some light on it there's a white cable and a black cable um, so the white is on the left if you're facing the back and the black is on the right but there's only one way for it to go in and out anyway okay so the tricky part will probably be taking it apart so i believe you just pull it out um see you just pull it out and hopefully you can just push it uh, in the perfect world right just push it so that it oh i see the bottom has to come down a little bit so you see the bottom so you push down on this tab, right? And then, see, oh, sorry. As you push down on this tab, the bottom will be released. And then it should come right out. See that? There's a little tab right there. Voila, kind of neat. And hopefully this one looks fine too. Not much wear and tear. Um, just don't confuse the parts. This says VGS, VGS. So yeah, oh wow, it's a little clicker thing right there see that kind of neat so we're going to put this piece over there on the side um right over here remember keep your parts separate because you don't want to mix up the new with the old or the old with, with the new just clean out from under there and then if you want to see how it looks on the inside you can see right there see that with two tracks on each side uh, I'll just get a little pointer thing so you can see a track there and a track there. The hardest part is getting it on the track. But once it's on the track, you are golden. So that's probably the trickiest part. So let's see if we get and if we can put it on the track. Goes on the side. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Perfect. It's going in. See? Voila. We got it. Slid it in. Nice. And just double check, make sure it's on the track. And see this part right there? Oops, can't really see. This part right here. See? And it's in. Now you have to plug it back in. There's only one way to plug it in. Okay? Alright, so now. What we'll do is, see, the wire is right there. Uh, we'll just put it like that. And then this goes in into its proper holes. Whoops. Just move that there, like that. You could probably do it with one hand. It's pretty relatively easy. And then just, it snaps. Snap right in. Double check the connectors. Uh, that's in. That's in. Now for the moment of truth, we should be able to print the fish. 
without a problem. Okay, we'll put this there, put that there. Um, I already have a fresh calibration in my file, so I'm going to go to print and see fish calibration right there and we're going to print it hopefully it'll work um let's see what this part is made up of you know i don't see much wear and tear on here it's possible that oh i see the clicker is not as as uh as uh tough but apparently this thing works a lot of magic on your 3d prints um this is soldered. As you can see, uh, interesting. Uh, it does look a little bit, doesn't look as straight as you want it to be. But let me see, hold on. No, that's fine. We'll look at it under, um, see on the back, it's not, it doesn't look even. Um, not that, you know, seems a little bit impossible to move, but here, let's check it out from the table while that thing is printing. Uh, Let's see, yeah, it looks fine, but it just, how this part is bent. I wonder if it bends, hold on. Yeah, it does a little bit, but it's not gonna impact it, but it just isn't. Just, if you look at it closely, you can tell that it's not straight. I'm not sure if that's how it's supposed to be. It's not even. I didn't compare the other one, um, but I guess time, you know, time will tell. I'm not gonna use this again, but Never know. We could straighten it out, right? Um, I'm not sure. You know, I don't want to ruin it because you never know. It could be a plan B until something better comes along. Um, but yeah, that's it. Um, we'll just put this in the bag and check it out. Check it out. Make sure our fish prints. Oh, nice. Looks like the sensor thing worked. We knew when to bring it back. Okay. But we'll know, you know, once it finishes. We're at 7%. This particular print takes exactly three, uh, about three minutes. Okay. Now, I use this as the calibration before I print something big. Uh, if I know my fish will print with all its parts um, when it looks like this, then we know moving forward we're good to go for a six hour print, three hour print. So remember, two minutes is worth the time. If you're going to print something for six hours, we'll put all the detail on that. See that? We could put it there because we're not going to be printing there. See that? Amazing detail. Um, so yeah, again, for your six hour prints, do this. So far so good. Looks pretty good. Looks like we're, um, you know, it's not like it's touching back there anyway. I guess it, it does it when we do the reset and hit the home button. We'll hit the home button once we, um, uh, you know, once we're done, we'll clean off the printer and uh, just get the remnants off that needs to be taken off um, so that the printer can reset and go back home without hopefully making that brrrr right sound. My little flamingo here. Hopefully we'll get um, to see it go back home and reset. We're at 66%. See that? Kind of neat. This was another 3D print, the astronaut. Really cool. It took many hours to print, um, but totally worth it. And let luck, we didn't even have to recalibrate the board because we didn't take it apart and, and change any of the uh, rollers or anything. So that part is good because uh, it is, oh, I don't want to move the um, printer just yet because it is a nightmare recalibrating it. To some extent, I have a little cheat sheet right here that I follow along with um, that just helps me um, when it's time to redo everything. Uh, so it's just, uh, just the boiler, not boiler, the, the AC uh, system, AC vac, uh, nothing special. Um, just, you know, using using space. Ah, oh, there it is, aha. All right, so it didn't affect the print, I'm changing the part. Okay, so uh, we'll just clean it off a little bit, you know, to get remnants off, clean that off, right? And it's soft, so you got to be really careful. Otherwise, it, it'll bend. But well, yeah, see how I bent it? Well, it's fine. Um, I know we know it printed. Uh, we'll see. Watch. I'll show you. See how it can bend when it's hot off the press. Uh, so now is the time to mold something if you wanted to. 
or even take supports off if they were. So it printed really well. Now let's see, I'm gonna just take some remnants off the board and home. Okay, uh, we'll go to finished and then we'll go ready. And let's see if we can go back home without that sound that it makes when, please. Nice, good reset, all right. So it knew where to go. And then let's see if we can bring, uh, so we brought that back home and that will bring the, the uh, extruder back, but there's no need to. And I guess that's it, yeah, why not, let's see. Make sure everything works. See, it went back home here, which is fine, but we're not gonna, and then we'll reset it and forget it once it's done. Just doing its thing. All right, so we'll send it back. And let's bring it back a little bit. See? And voila. Yep, looks like it worked. Thanks to the folks at Creality. Kind of neat, huh? Um, as easy as one, two, three. I might order another one just in case, has a plan B. Uh, even though it's covered on the warranty, you just never know when you might need one again, uh, like with some other parts uh, when it comes to uh, 3D printing. And um, not bad. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more complex, but it slid right in. You wanna make sure you get that little lever down so it slides right in. But other than that, that's pretty much it. It is a little bent, as you saw. I'm not sure from what. I'm not sure if that's how it's by how it is by default. I didn't get to compare the parts, but um, and now, as you can see, it's working without any problem. And thanks again to the folks at Creality for actually sending this. Anyway, I hope this video helped you in fixing your Ender 3 S1 Pro with the Y access motor switch, so that you can get up and running and not hear that. <laughs> right. Um, and if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below or ideas for other videos. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.